The various post-acute care settings have recently seen that Medicare reimbursement has transformed into a delivery model where providers are assessed by factors such as their outcomes data, five-star ratings, and quality measures. As a result, hospital systems and physicians have new clinical expectations and incentives to send their patients to entities that demonstrate evidence-based practice, low-cost care, as well as top-tier quality and patient satisfaction. This evolution should come as no surprise, considering CMS's triple aim philosophy. One, improved patient care. Two, reduced healthcare cost. Three, improved population health. To help establish alignment with triple aim, PDPM, and other similar incentives have been developed to help reduce fragmentation of care and drive outcomes. One of the ways that facilities can increase efficiency and enhance service delivery is through a restorative care program. Historically, the term restorative has been used in many different contexts within the industry and as a result has produced some confusion. For example, the term has been used in the following ways. A therapist often describes it as non-skilled service delivery post-therapy discharge. A provider or facility often describes it as the provision of a nursing-led service in accordance with the CMS Resident Assessment Instrument or RAI guidelines. Within the wellness domain, it is often described as a service that may be delivered parallel to therapy by a trained technician. According to the RAI manual, a resident may be started in a restorative nursing program when they are admitted to the facility with restorative needs, but not a candidate for formalized rehabilitation therapy, or when restorative needs arise during the course of a long-term stay, or in conjunction with formalized rehabilitation therapy. At Aegis Therapies, our definition of restorative is conceptually aligned with this statement and is inclusive of all three viewpoints we've mentioned. We define it as the delivery of non-skilled service as identified by a registered therapist, whether it is a physical therapist, occupational therapist, or speech-language pathologist, and typically provided by restorative personnel. This means the service delivery may be in concert with ongoing skilled therapy intervention or post-therapy discharge. Additionally, under PDPM, there may be a financial impact to the use of restorative services that did not exist in PPS. In order to impact CMI, three main components must be complete. One, restorative delivery must be in at least two of the following categories, urinary bowel toileting program, bed mobility and or walking, amputation prosthesis care, eating and or swallowing, active and or passive range of motion, ROM, transfer training, dressing and or grooming, communication training. Two, it must be delivered in at least the following increments, 15 minutes each, six days per week, four to one ratio or less. Three, key components of the documentation must include establishment of a restorative plan of care, daily minute documentation in the plan of care, POC, monthly note by the restorative nurse manager, completion of Section H, urinary bowel training, and Section O. In order to achieve desired outcomes in a restorative care program, communication and collaboration are essential amongst the interdisciplinary team. Be sure to establish and maintain a clear flow of information, which is monitored during the look back period and on an ongoing basis to ensure accountability for all aspects of restorative care delivery. As always, we are here for you in this dynamic and challenging reimbursement climate as we strive to keep you updated on best practices and changes. Keep checking back to our resource center for the latest information on PDPM.